Hello there. So, you want to make an epic adventure video. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to give you some tips to help you tell your story. I personally have been making adventure videos for about 15 years, creating content for the Travel Channel, Men's Journal, and a lot of other outlets. But right now, my true passion is making videos for this channel right here. Hey, how's it going? My name is Ryan Van Duzer. Are you ready for an adventure? My approach to filming is very run and gun. I don't storyboard beforehand. I just go on the adventure and whatever happens, happens. You see this amazing sunset? You see this amazing life? It's a good day. It's a very good day. In my videos, it might look like I have an entire production team with me, but it's usually just me out there. And in this video, I'm gonna cover gear, filming techniques, and other tidbits that'll help you create your own awesome adventure videos. First of all, the entire point of going on an adventure is to get outside, to enjoy mother nature, to challenge yourself both physically and mentally, to sleep under the stars, to disconnect from technology, right? I say all of this because the adventure always comes first. <laughs> The second goal, at least for me, is to document it. Now don't get me wrong, I love sharing my adventures with the world and my entire mission is to inspire you to get off your couches and challenge yourselves. Good morning everybody, good work, good work! But documentation should never get in the way of enjoying the moment. It can be a tricky balance sometimes and sometimes you can do both at the same time, film and enjoy but sometimes it's best just to put the cameras down and enjoy mother nature at her finest. It's time to turn off the camera and just sit here and just be, just be here. Goodbye everybody. You don't need the best cameras and you definitely don't need to spend a ton of money on camera gear. Now it's easy to get wrapped up in all of the latest and greatest, but the truth is, unless you have an unlimited budget, you'll never be able to keep pace with all the new stuff that is constantly coming out. Just check it out. Going to these websites just makes my head hurt. There's too much stuff in the world. For my kit, I emphasize small. I love all of my gear to fit in a carry-on size bag, and the reason is it's no fun to go on an adventure and be lugging really heavy equipment. Small camera. Small, small, small. Small drone, small tripod, smaller tripod, small microphone. And this camera, this camera is also pretty small. Check it out. I have done multiple adventures with just these cameras. And as you can see, it pretty much fits in the palm of my hand. I'll put a link in the description of everything I use for all of you tech nerds out there. Deal? The best part about small cameras like this is that they fit in your pocket, which makes them very easy to get out if you want to capture that spontaneous moment. Go away! Get him! Get him! And let's face it, when you're on an adventure, you don't know what is going to happen. So it's great to have a camera right at your side that you can pull out and hit record at any moment to capture the shot. Whoa. Look at this guy. You're cool looking, bud. Just tell your buddies not to bite us tonight when we're sleeping. <laughs> Covering all the angles. Now I love my action camera because it is so easy to stick on my head and hit record. But hold on just a second. If you put this camera on your head and hit the record button and let it roll for the next five hours of your adventure, your footage is gonna be a little bit boring. It's only one angle. Here's what you can do to get a few more different angles. Take that helmet cam off your head and put it on a selfie stick like this. And when you're on your bike or when you're walking, record forward for 10 seconds, record backwards, record your feet, record to the left, record to the right. And then when you edit, you have a lot of different angles to clip to and it looks way better. To further mix up your shooting, I like using these point and shoots. This is the Sony RX100. And what's great about these types of cameras is you can zoom in. Zoom. The great thing about a little bit of a zoom 
is you can get a little bit closer to the subject that an action cam just can't do. You can also do a little bit of rack focusing to get those styly shots. And what I really love about these kinds of cameras is sticking them on tripods. And what I'll do is I'll stick it on a tripod, I'll hit record, and I'll run back or bike back and then run in front of the camera and do that over and over and over and it makes it look like I have a camera buddy with me on the adventure when in reality I just have a little tripod. I would never forget you. No way. Come on, let's go. The audio on these point and shoots is usually a bit better than an action cam. So you can use this for an interview or your just self-style vloggy talk. You know what time it is? Burrito time. Frijoles. Drones have been out for a little while now and I freaking love them. They've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. When I first got the Mavic Pro, I was scared to fly it because I thought immediately I was going to smash it into a tree or to a light pole. But the good thing is they're pretty easy to learn how to fly. And man, these things just open up your ability to show those really huge landscapes. And just like any other camera with a drone, you're going to want to get different angles so that when you edit, it looks a little bit more dynamic. So you get a shot from behind, from the front, from straight down pointing at the earth and off to the side. And it just looks way cooler in your edit. Here's a little fun fact that I don't tell my mom. I control the drone while biking. I know there are a lot of follow features on drones now, but I like to have more control of my shots. I only recommend doing this on roads where there's not many cars. As you can see, I'm not paying attention to anything but the drone. Watch out, there's a power line here. Don't worry, Mom. I promise I'm careful. If you don't film it, it never happened. There are going to be moments on your adventure where the last thing you want to do is pull out your camera because you're so tired. But those are the good moments. That is the good stuff that draws your viewers in. Let's go. Jesus, come on, man. Ooh, fuck. Ah. This is seriously the most brutal bike route I have ever done or heard of in my life. Tell us how much it hurts. Tell us how much you want your mommy. If you only film the happy moments, you're pretty much making a truck commercial. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I what I mean here is try to give your viewers a true account of what's happening. It draws them in. Think about your favorite Hollywood movies. We always root for the character who's going through the pain cave. We're all humans. We've all been through tough stuff. And if you show that, I guarantee you, your viewers are gonna start rooting you on. This is insane. At this point, it's all about just one foot in front of the other. It is painful, painful, painful. Here's a big one, audio. Tickle, 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 tickle. I personally like to record all of my audio in the moment as it's happening, as opposed to doing a voiceover later on in post. And the reason why I like this is because it just sounds more natural, it sounds more conversational, and you're right there in the moment. So it's, it's just real. When you come home a month later and start editing and you try to match that emotion, it just doesn't sound very genuine, at least for me. It feels really good to be here, planning this trip at home, looking at the maps, looking at the photos. I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, it's been just absolutely mind blowing out here. And finally, if you wanna start making adventure videos, good adventure videos, you have to put in the effort. And I know that it's a pain in the butt sometimes to pull out your camera gear when you're tired and set it up on tripods and ride by your tripod or run past your tripod or walk past your tripod over and over and over and over. But that's what's necessary to be able to tell a complete story. Mr. Camera, let's go. But I promise you, if you do this, you'll be well on your way to 1 million subscribers. Or maybe 35,000-ish. Please like and subscribe. Help the doozer out. And as a bonus tip, always bring lots of extra batteries. 
I know there's some solar panels out there now, but I find it just easier to bring lots of extra charged batteries. Depending on your adventure, you might be able to charge up every now and then at a truck stop or a cafe, but there is nothing worse than being out in the middle of nowhere in a beautiful area wanting to record and you have no batteries. So these, even though, you know, it's a lot, it's still pretty small. I'm not gonna get into editing here, but if you get a variety of shots in the first place, it's gonna make editing a lot more enjoyable and a lot more fun for your viewer. I really hope that these tips help you in some way. I've been making videos for a long time and I'm still learning. I have not made the perfect video and that's what keeps me motivated to keep on creating content and going out there and having fun. And fun, my friends, is the number one goal. Even if you're out on an adventure in a rainstorm and you're kind of miserable, it is always better than sitting on your couch eating cheesy poofs. I love cheesy poofs. You love cheesy poofs. It is a beautiful summer morning, and today we were heading up to Royal Arch. Oh yeah. Also, you don't need to go somewhere exotic to make stunning adventure videos. I started my career going on backyard adventures for public access TV. The point is just to get outside, maybe alone, maybe with friends, and enjoy mother nature. Near? Far! If you wanna check out my adventures, please like and subscribe. I have all sorts of fun stuff. Woo! Thank you for watching, and we'll see you down the road. <laughs>